Don't intimidate the woman that has delivered three, four children for you. And now her tummy, everything has shaved. Her breasts are shaved. And because of that, you don't even feel anything for her. She's not attracting you again. You make her feel so bad because you met a legon girl or some small girl or some young girl who is who has never given birth. And you compare her to your wife. When you met your wife, if she was not attractive, if she was not attractive enough, would you have married her? I love you, all of you. It's always a blessing to have all of you here. Mm. So you pick your Bibles and let's do it together. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh. Okay, so let's read Ephesians chapter 5. Read chapter 5. Let's, let me read from there. Mm. The 32. The, the Ephesians chapter 5, 32. This mystery is profound. And I'm saying that it is refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. When we read other verses, it says that make sure or the wife should reverence the husband. Reverence. Today I'm talking about the reverence because the reverence is the whole topic of it itself. Okay, so we are talking about the efficient chapter 5 woman. It's a wife, the 22 wives, submit to your own husbands as the law. So why submit to your own husbands as to the law? Hey, listen, listen. <laughs> submit to your own husbands as to the law. It means that you need to submit to the man as you will submit to God. So you first need to submit to this man. Then it is easy for you to submit to God. But you can't submit to a man who can't submit to God. Yeah. This one, it goes to women, it goes to men, it goes to all of us. We need to learn. I pray the Spirit of God will help me tonight to be able to, to, to say the things He wants me to say because it's going to work in me, it's going to work in you, it's going to work in all of us because none, none of us is perfect. We are all learning by the Spirit of God. Let, let me let, let me set this, this record straight. Marriage in Ghana, marriage in US, marriage in UK, marriage in Germany, they are all marriage. Listen, don't tell me, oh, we are in UK, so here things are not like, no. Every marriage is God. This one, whether you agree or you disagree, let me tell you this. Every marriage, because marriage itself is God. He instituted this organization. Mm. Hmm. Marriage. Help me, Lord, to understand this. Help me, Lord. So, so no matter the rules in UK, no matter the rules in US, no matter the rules in Ghana, you cannot allow the laws of wherever you are to interfere in your marriage. No. Because whether you are in US or wherever you are, whether you are in Ghana, wherever you are, it is God's institution. And the rules are one. Wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives as you love yourself so you can't tell me here in uk we don't do things like that if i do this you can do this no 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 marriage should be should be two people working it out together it should be a, a, a place where spiritually we understand the purpose of it it's a mystery of its own marriage cannot be ruled by your country's president because even your country president is having issues with his marriage. Marriage cannot be determined by your archbishop or your bishop. No, they are also having their own issue. This marriage is the best person to go to 
for solution is Christ. It's Christ. He knew that when it comes to the point where a woman needs to submit, it's going to be a problem. He knew that when it comes to the point where a man needs to love the woman, he claims he loves. There's going to be a problem. But therefore he said this. It takes only these two things that a man can do. Love. Selfless love. Too difficult to hurt the one you say you love. Too difficult to not treat the one you say you love. Yes, because she did something wrong. If you love, love covers all sin. Because if Christ never loved us, we should have killed us by now. Remember where you went to the things you've done. How many times you have hurt God and he still covers you, protects you the moment you run and say, Father, have mercy. He still forgives you his love. Let me use the love that Christ had for David as an example. Let me tell you that love. That is the kind of God we are serving. That is the kind of thing God is comparing men to do. He said, man must love the wife as he will love himself because there has not been any man yet that hates himself. So why do you bullet that woman you call your wife? Why, why, why are you comfortable? Sometimes when I listen to some things, I ask myself that when a man is blessed, when a man has money, when a man is made, when a man has properties, he is qualified to sleep with so many women. When, did, when was he accepted? And the same men can go to church. They feel comfortable and sit there. When did it happen? When did it become so comfortable that a woman that God has made his own no image can say that, oh, I don't care. I, I don't want to marry, but I want to have a child with somebody and still go to church and it's comfortable. If you don't want to marry, it is not by force. Don't let anybody force you into marriage. But please, if you don't want to marry, you are not qualified to sleep with anybody. You are not qualified. This is one is so difficult for some people to understand. But I'm speaking about the mysteries of the Ephesians chapter 5 woman and the mysteries of the Ephesians chapter 5 man. Oh, yes. I love this part. Is. Why submit to your own husbands as to the law? So this one that compares him is man and God. So he has made the man as your God. And this man we are talking about is not a bully. This man we are talking about is not a selfish person. No. This man we are talking about is somebody who can die for you because Christ gave himself for the church. Can I not give himself for, for you? Ask that question. Can the man you call your husband or the man you want to marry, can he sacrifice everything in the name of I love you and to protect you? Can he defend you in every aspect of your life? That is the kind of woman God is talking about. As Ephesians is saying. I'm reading the Bible. Ephesians chapter 5, the verse 22. So we go to the verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Hey, this is where the mystery comes in. And his body. And as himself its savior. Hmm. Now as the church submits to Christ. So also wives submit. Should submit in everything to their husbands. <laughs> God help us. The 25. Husbands. Love your wives as Christ loved the church. Can, can, this is the point. It said. The wife should submit to the man. As, as the church will submit to Christ this is the difficult thing can the wife submit totally as the church needs to submit to Christ and can the man love the wife as Christ loved the church ask that question the way Christ loves the church the kind of thing the church does against Christ sometimes we speak the things we want to speak without even seeking the face of God but he still loves us and covers us. The thing sometimes the church does, God grieves up there. But when we cry and we go to the mercy seat, mercy is, is being opened and given unto the church. 
Can a husband love the wife the way Christ will love the church? It takes few people to understand this mystery of marriage. It takes few people to be able to walk according to the precept of God. It takes only few people to come to themselves and understand that, wow, this thing I want to enter into it is not what I want. It's what Christ wants. Can it be done? Mm -hmm. It's a question really. If you're not married, you are privileged. You, 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 need, you need to listen to this. And as you listen to this, let your feeling, let what you think, let your knowledge go aside. Because it is God that needs to direct you into this church. If you're already married, I, no, it is not too late. Christ can still help us in it. Me and you. Christ needs to help us into it. Alright? So don't be worried wherever you find yourself. Don't be worried. Say, Mommy, I've made a mistake. No. In your mistake, God can be the correction for your mistake. Mm. In your mistake, God can still come in and have a change. I pray that tonight, anyone listening to me, if you're in UK, if you're in London, if you're in Canada, wherever you are, if you're in Ghana, wherever you find yourself, Nigeria, Ivory Coast, South Africa, in every continent of this world, I pray that the Spirit of God will come upon your life. That we can be obedient to His Word. Okay, let me continue reading. <laughs> hmm. I love this. The 25. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Oh, I love Jesus. That he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water. Hey, husbands have a job to do. Eh, <laughs> hey, mercy Lord. You must cleanse her by the washing of water with the word so that he might present the church to himself as splendor without a spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish you see how god is uh, descri describing the church she because she is the bride the church is the bride and christ is the groom the man is the groom the woman is the bride and god is saying the man should present the woman glamorous Without any blemish, without any spot, without any wrinkle. Okay, let me continue reading. That she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it as Christ, just as Christ does the church. Because we are members, okay, we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. This mystery, this is my point. This mystery is profound. Profound, this mystery. And I'm saying it that it refers to Christ and the church. This mystery is profound. This mystery, it takes people who are deeper spiritually to understand and ask God. This battles in my marriage. This battle in my relationship. This thing that is going on. Father, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me. Come on. I want somebody to share. Share and bring somebody on board. And let's do it together. This mystery. This mystery. Is it if you want to walk with God, your will is being taken away from you. If you want to walk with God, the things you want to do is being taken away from you. Now his will is what works inside you. That is not when we surrender, we say, I give my all to you, I surrender. I mean that when I lift up my hands and I say, I surrender to you, it means I am giving you my interest. I am giving you what I like. I am giving you the things I wish I could do. Now, 
I take it all out. That's just creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. There is a spirit that brings anger. There is a spirit that wants always battle. There is a spirit that won't give me a chance because I am made. I have my money. I have my company. I build my house. I don't see the reason why I should submit to any man. I don't want anybody to control. So people say that I don't want to marry. Do you know why? I don't want anybody to control. People think marriage is a place where you are controlled. Marriage is a place where you stand together with your team. Your husband is your team. Your wife is your teammate. Marriage is when you, you team up with your partner. Then you run the race that God has set ahead of us. It's marriage is a race. It, 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 it's a journey. Where that is the last place God will come and meet. Meet us. And that establishes real with us. I don't know whether <laughs> hey, help me, Lord. Ay, help, help me. Mm, help me, Lord. The Lord, I, 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 I pray the Lord help me. He's, he's saying a lot of a lot of things. Help me. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. See, I, 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 I'm connecting this to the ten virgins that went on this journey, prepared, but others were not prepared. There are other people who enter into marriage unprepared. There are other people who enter into marriage without knowing what it entails. Oh, Jesus, help me with this revelation. So it's a journey that anyone that comes to this earth, you go through that journey. We can all be the same. We can all be virgins. We can have all one motive. We are all Christians. We are walking towards one destination. But there are people that are coming with that unprepared. There are people who have no idea of where we are going to. There are people who don't value the meetings we are going to meet. They don't value what can happen. The journey to meet the groom is not a joke. The journey, anything can happen on the way. Anything that is a mystery. We are going on the journey. We don't know what will happen in the journey. But as we walk as a team, if we walk with one understanding, and we put our interests aside you step on my ego you said this to me everything you are offended and we can stand together not focusing on what the devil wants to distract us but focusing on where God is taking us ah when the trouble comes when the ego when the pride when, when, when that thing steps in because we are a team we speak together with one voice we orchestrate and we speak into the rent and we put a stop to what the devil is doing and I'm telling you we walk through where God is taking us because we are prepared, we have extra oil, we have extra skills, things that will take us to the journey to meet Christ. Mm. So, is your partner prepared? Are you a team together? If you are a team, that when one is falling, you will stand and lift the person up. If you are a team, you don't step or stop your husband at the back or stop your wife at the back. If you're a team, you don't see that young girl and have interest for that young girl, my dear. It is not all about what you see that attracts you. Uh, in the same time, you see beyond what physical eyes can see. Because the journey we are embarking on, it's not a physical journey, but we are in the physical world. So we need to walk in the spiritual world. It says that we are serving the God. We serve him in spirit and in truth. If you cannot dive into the spiritual realm, it will be difficult to deal with marriage. You'll be offended with everything. You'll be offended with everything. The way he spoke, the way he behaved, the things he said, you'll be offended. Physical things will, will affect your life. The devil uses that to, 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 to make us lose focus where God is taking us. The devil will do that to, 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 to make you not look at where God is taking you. But listen, there were people that were ready, that were going on the journey, that understood what can happen on the journey, that prepared themselves together. Marriage is not a boss and a slave. Marriage is a great strong team together. When one was a boss, that was Adam. And then Adam realized he can't do it again. I need my teammate to come and join me. I need that strong teammate that can stand with me. I need that teammate that understand where we are going to. If you marry somebody who all they think is me, I should be the one that making it. I should be the every praise goes to me. Oh, you should praise me. I pick it from the God. So you should praise me. Please. That one. It's not a teamwork. It's a bullet organization. Bully. Hey, I pray that you can understand where I'm coming from. I 
pray the spirit of God will help us. It's too much. The mystery is too much. If we can understand, we will work it. Call your husband, call your wife. Hey, whatever has happened, tell your husband, your, your wife. We need to make it, we need to make it work. If we start them with that preparation, we are going to start it well. We are, we are going to make it again. There's nothing wrong to start again, start again. Call your husband, call your wife. You say, what? Well, I've made mistakes. Yes, we are bound to make mistakes. We are about to sleep on the road. We are about to forget so many things. It is part of the journey. You don't need to criticize somebody. You don't need to criticize her. You judge her too but you say things to where somebody can look at the wife's face and insult her as if she's she's nothing why do you always want to make her feel nothing why do you always want her to to, to, to feel in, as if as if she's not good enough for you she's not beautiful look at your shape you get better you have to give it but look at the way your tummy is are you serious she risked her life to have a baby for you which you will name as your own and you couldn't appreciate that woman resting a life for you and you can look at her, her up and down and 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 insult her and make her feel less of a woman then she cries within because you've met a young girl somewhere who is sexy who 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 is sexy who looks good who wear the good clothes get good makeup good bath everything about her is good because you are paying you, you don't care to give her sign your checks to her you don't care do the same for your wife when you met her and she has not delivered she was that sexy woman you picked and you loved her that is why you went to marry her so today if things have changed you also have to change and adjust to it adjust to it on this journey on this journey of marriage, pride doesn't come in here. Pride is taken out. Humility is grown here. We get the grace to learn. The grace to, Father, help me because I don't know what I'm going to do. Father, the, the thing is, is too much for me. You see, if you are a team and you are going and one is losing focus, sorry, you don't also reject the person you stand by the person pray and and bring the person back to the track and whatever is making the person lose focus you need to cast that thing out you need to pray and take that thing out and bring your partner back to the track because you are going to a place because you have a place you are destined to go and you are going with this partner so if you are going with the partner you don't allow the distractions on the way to stop where you are going to. You, you understand? He said this is a mystery that Christ compares this to his church. So marriage is compared to the church. I told you last week, marriage is God Himself. Yeah, there is a mystery in it. And until we die, we never get to know the rest of it. We learn every day. We, we, we move from grace to grace. We learn every minute as we walk. Because if there's nothing to learn, Christ will not give you a life to live. We get life to live because there is something he has to give to us every new day. He said his blessings are renewed every moment. Every minute of our lives, things are being renewed. Every second is being renewed. Every moment we make a step, he's being renewed. I tell you this, that every minute you, you walk, you may be married for 40 years. You've not finished learning anything. You still need to learn every day. Because every day there is something God wants us to know. Every day there is something new God brings in our lives, in our marriage, in our children's life. Where the, the mystery of God bringing children in our life is so powerful. You see, that it means that he can trust the two of you to give you this precious gift for you to take over them. If you can't take care of yourself, he can give you this journey. Mm. So if you know you're not married and you want to get married, please 
There are rules you must go through. There are things you must go through. It is high time you come down from your high horse. Come down from your high horse. Mm. It is high time you come down. It is high time you allow the will of God to rule in your life. It is high time you ask yourself, what is your purpose for me? Because on the journey, anything can happen on the journey. Anything, we can step alongside the road. Battles will come alongside the road. Frustrations will come. Disappointments will come. So many things will happen alongside the road. But there's one thing that I am sure of. When frustrations are on the road, when, 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 when things are going to stop you, barriers on the road. There's one thing I'm sure. If you have a right partner, if you have a, a right team partner, who can understand the situation at time, you start together and encourage each other. When one said, I can't do it. The other says that you can do it. And the other becomes a strength to the other. When one other feels I want to give up. There's another one that has got extra oil that can push. That's why we need to be a team. Not a team to become this one is better than this. No. A team where everybody respects each other. A team where, where I love what you have. You love. We support. I push you. You push me. We do it together. Not a team one, one feels superior. And one wants to bring somebody down. No, 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 no. When it becomes like that, it becomes a scene. Okay, I am the boss. You need to respect me. Egoistic. Oh, no, 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 no. When there is understanding between the two of us, it is easy for this one to respect and submit. It is easy for this one to love you. There is nothing like less. Eh, 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 Power sharing. We respect each other's power. That's the point. The woman needs to respect the man. The man needs to love her. You don't judge. You stand by each other. That is how it's supposed to be. It is a teamwork. Because even Christ says that I have given before you what is good and what is bad. Make your choice. He doesn't impose it on you. He gives you a chance, a ground where you can communicate with me. He said, if you are willing and obedient, let's sit down and talk. Christ wants to sit down with you and talk. But you don't want to sit down with your wife or sit down with your husband and talk. That is serious. Even Christ himself wants us to sit down. And have a talk. And because the woman, she's too blessed. Her pay is big. She's of a class. So she thinks when she meets a man, who, whose pay is not like the way she gets. She allow pay. She allow education. To determine which man she should choose. Be careful. Be careful who you are judging. Be careful. Be careful how you treat the person. If you love yourself that much, that the things you expect your wife to do, if you are the one doing it, if you not be happy, don't bully her. And woman, learn how to shut up a little. You talk too much. You are too much. You talk too much. You know everything. You have every idea about everything. You don't know when to shut up and when to talk. You always step on his ego. Listen, it doesn't work like that. It's a teamwork. And every teamwork, everybody has got his weakness. Everybody has got his strength. But the best thing is that we will all use our strength to stand with each other. We stand with each other in our weakness and lift each other up. I don't judge your weakness. You don't judge my weakness. I respect your weakness. You respect my weakness. We stand together and pray and make it work. We are heading towards one place. Going to meet our maker. Going to meet the one that 
instituted at this marriage. When we meet him, we need him to, to, to say that, oh, you've done a good job. When we meet him, he needs to say that, wow, I thank God with all your position, you were able to submit. I, I bless you for whatever you've done. With all the way you look, you were able to love her. We know why you come to Africa. We have this tradition. Oh, I, 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 I can't. The way this is the way we treat men. If you go to Nigeria, this is the way we treat men. It is all good. But I'm asking you this. It is not Nigeria that is treated marriage. Neither is it a can that is treated marriage. If you are part of the family of God, you need to go to the rules that God has made for marriage. And that is when a woman needs to submit to the husband as she would do to God. And the man needs to love the wife as Christ will love the church. If you get a man that doesn't know how to Christ love the church, he can't love you. He will love you. It is there are some examples. I want, there was a prophet in the Bible that God told him to go and marry a prostitute. Wow. That is why Christ is not choosing. If you are over and you run to him, he will save you and change you. If, so if somebody has got a past, if the person was a prostitute before you married the person, the little thing, oh, because you're a prostitute, you don't ever let this woman have, have, have peace in, in her life. Because in the past of the life she was living, but Christ has saved her. That is why you married her. Why do you bully her with the past? Why do you bully her? And you woman, because maybe in the past your husband didn't know God and he cheated, he made a mistake and you caught him now thank God he has come to know Christ you still want to use the past to bully him you don't know how to forgive if Christ has not forgiven the church he should have killed all of us because there are so many things we have done against Christ but because his mercies are always with us because he died on the cross to save us. So he's always with us. What I told him, your husband do, that you cannot come back to forgive, but you want to divorce. I want to divorce. I want to divorce. You've forgotten. You, you, you brought this man and said, this is the one you want to spend the rest of your life with. Why are you cutting in between? Are you like the other five virgins who were unprepared? Who didn't know that they, what they were going to? Who didn't ask extra? If you don't have extra oil, you can't marry. I'm telling you the truth. If you don't have extra oil, because there are things in marriage, it is better you will say it's better you divorce because there is no joy. You are not happy. You, you are being more treated. The things you love, you don't get them. Your dreams, how you want your marriage to be, and everything has changed. There are things in marriage if you get to a point waiting for the groom, he will delay. Financial problems in the marriage, struggles in the marriage, your mother in law, your sisters in law, even your husband will rise up against you, your wife will rise up against you. They are part of the journey. It takes only extra oil to sustain us. Extra oil. Extra oil. It takes extra oil. I'm going to close up. Please share. Somebody needs to join this. Share for me. It takes extra. So if you're a young lady listening to me, you have no extra oil. Please, you will leave the you, you will leave the race because you can't you can't continue. Because sometimes we get to a point where we are tired. You want to rest. That is a mystery. You get to some point if you don't you don't get extra. When you get up, your light will go. Your light will be off. Some of you, your light is gone. So you have no, there's no light in the marriage. There is no joy. Nothing is working. Someone, someone say, mommy, I don't love him again. It's not that you don't love him. Your light is off. You should have, you should have brought your extra oil. When the light goes off, you, you, you put more oil to bring the light back. Sometimes in marriage, the light goes off. Sometimes you feel, ah. Nothing is working. You need. You, you wish you could experience another thing. You wish there could be other better things. You have. The marriage is boring. Nothing is working. Everything is passer. Nothing. Everything. You are man of God, woman of God. Things are not working. And you wish you, you didn't. You didn't. 
you shouldn't have married that person because you met somebody who is interesting. You met somebody who looks all good. And know that, my dear, anything you are seeing around your marriage is a frustrating. That's something that is coming to frustrate you from where God is taking you. Listen, all you need is the extra oil. You need extra oil to put in the old lamp thing you are holding. The same man, the same woman. All you need is to get extra oil from God and lamp and, and put it inside and the light will shine again. To continue the journey. You can't tell me eh, eh, because my, my light is off. I, 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 I've off it. I'm not going again. You will be like the five foolish virgins that didn't prepare. They thought it might is all about dressing up, having the best wedding, the best dress, uh, bridesmaids. Then we are dancing. Hey, the people are coming. Tw uh, Twelve uh, people have a uh, 20 bridesmaids, 20 uh, best men, a hey, after party, uh, uh, brides, shower, whatever. They have names, so many names for it, so many names. There are people who start the journey and they look as if all is well. Oh, I married a big man's son. I married a big woman's son. Hey, the wedding was on top of that. And yeah, go and count 10 years back. People that married and they were on top. Everybody knew. Go and check all that and find those who are still married. They've all divorced. One have left. This one doesn't want. They have excuses everywhere. And she asked back. She, this one has, he cheated. It is, they have excuses. You know why? Because they picked their lights. And it was and everybody was happy about it. They were going. They didn't pick extra. Because they didn't know what was ahead of, of them. They were just they were just going because they said there's a journey. They were just moving because people were married. Me too, I want to marry. Me too, I also marry. Hey, my wedding. After party. Come and see the price. Hey, people will talk about it. It's on now. It, it, everything is on Facebook. So every every young lady wants to have the the best of the weddings, my dear, my dear. Best of what, what weddings? The best is when you are able to stand as a team to the end to meet the groom. Not start well, and in the middle when you sleep and you get up, when something happens in the marriage, you end up the marriage. No. But the good ones are those that when they got to the middle and things were tough, they were able to put the extra oil inside and move ahead and went there and had the, the, the groom coming and they met the groom. The five other foolish virgins, they couldn't do because someone will say, hey, my friend, if you know you can't divorce, so don't sit there and die. Who said you should go and sit there and die? Did you prepare before going? Or you just joined? Don't follow this world and their, their frustration eh, 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 advice. Some people will come and speak to you. My dear, don't tire you. If you know divorce, leave or and have your peace because I am making it. I also make it. Sister, please see the one that is talking and look at the Bible. Compare the person with the Bible. Who, who will you listen to? Human or God? Because, mommy, I, I, my, my wife is not helping me in ministry. I think I made the wrong one. Which, which ministry? Is the ministry for you? It's God's ministry. He chooses the ones he wants to use. Stop talking. Uh, my, my, my wife is not a ministry material. Are you a ministry material? Are you a ministry material? The one that is to stay married, go and ask him questions. Don't judge the woman. Don't frustrate her. Because you see other people and their wife, they are doing ministry. The way the woman is preaching, my dear, nobody can be the same. We are all different in a different ways. Everybody has got a, something special in them. Stop comparing your wife with people. Stop comparing your husband with people. They can't be those people. They are who they are. Love them for who they are. Appreciate them for who they are. Who are you to be choosing wife, uh, 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 ministry material? It's a ministry for you. It's for God. And wherever you want to place that woman, it's not a mistake. If you made a mistake marrying her, when it comes to God, your mistake can be the correction God can make and become a better thing. It's because you have not directed the marriage to God. You are ruling the marriage with your mind. So you met a young girl in, at the church that comes that comes to the church. And the way the girl sings, the way the girl does things in the church, the way the girl serves men of God, the way the pastor is praising the girl, oh, this girl in my church, she's so good. So you think she's better than your wife. So now you are sought out by sitting down. Everything, little thing your wife will do, you will insult it. You will say this. And there are other young women who compare their husbands with other people's husbands. You should be ashamed to say that. 
see, see, see some men. When, when men are buying bands, when men are buying that, the way that man of God takes care of the wife. So what? And so, is that man of God your husband? Is that man your husband? Please be content with the soup you are eating and stop looking at people's soup. You chose in Katenkwan, Ghana soup. Somebody chose light soup. Why do you still want to taste the light soup and still eat your uh, uh, Ghana soup? If you can focus on your Ghana soup, there is something good in the Ghana soup you have not noticed because you are not focused, you are looking at somebody's own. Focus on your own. There is something good in it. Make use of it. Make use of it and stop making your partners feel as if they are nothing. Make it work. Don't intimidate the woman that has delivered three, four children for you. And now her tummy, everything has shaved. Her breasts are shaved. And because of that, you don't even feel anything for her. She's not attracting you again. You make her feel so bad because you met a legon girl. Or some small girl. Or some young girl. Who is who has never given birth. And you compare her to your wife. When you met your wife, if she was not attractive, if she was not attractive enough, would you have married her? There's some who say that, and when I married her, I wasn't having money. So now when you, when you have money, your eyes open. I, I wonder how money can change some men. How money can change some women. And they have no respect for their wives. The wife should accept so, because he wants to cheat. He's a man. Some will say, I'm a man. When it comes to men, you know, we, we can't eat one food. You can't eat one food. Because you have, you have different food to eat. Go buy them. The, the food, some of the food you eat, it will tend to poison and destroy you. My dear, rule your life as God has set for us. Don't rule your life according to how your friends are doing it. Because your friends have no idea, they have no mystery of marriage. It is so, it's so strange that a man or a woman will live with them, uh, 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 their, their partner for 50 years and they are still together. And sometimes when you go and ask them, mommy, how did you do it? They tell them, it's not that I never had interest for any other person. It's not that I couldn't, I couldn't get another woman. No, I had all that edge. I met women that came into my life. I met men that came into my life. But I have committed myself. I have made a vow to God that I will close my eyes to this world and look to God what he has for me and my teammates because my wife is my teammate my husband is my teammate it's not your bully partner there are some men they think when they are not dead the woman is useless they don't believe anything in you they don't believe in the strength they don't encourage their women they don't push them and there are some women too they can never encourage your husband you know why because they look at other people they don't look at what is inside you they, they have no respect for you the way she and the way that those who have yes will listen to the word of God. You see, the truth, if, it, if I was saying something that is different, look, you will see people that will come to the page. When you see, the truth is so difficult for people to accept. Nowadays, they no, 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 no. Nobody should speak the truth. When you speak the truth, there will have people that will criticize and judge you, my dear. Me, I am never a perfect wife. I will, I will never be until Christ come. I'm still working towards perfection with Christ. I'm working towards it. I'm learning every day. Sometimes I get angry. Sometimes I disagree. Sometimes I misbehave. Let me tell you this. We all have our issues. Nobody has a perfect thing. We have our issues. But the reason why we are still walking and going is because anytime we our our lantern get dry, anytime our light lights get dry, there is another oil that we pour inside, and it, it keeps us going because we are going somewhere to meet our master, and we will meet him as one body and as one people with one mind. I can never be a perfect woman, but I'm walking with the God that is perfect. So by his, by his spirit and his perfection, it impacts upon my life. So sometimes when the edge comes for me to make a mistake, by the grace when I seek him and I said, I'm getting weak, please help me out. He finds a way to fuel me up because my car is almost stopping. And sometimes you get to a point where you want to stop the car because you are tired of driving. But the one that I sent you hasn't told you to stop the driving. So I tell him, you know what? There is no other fuel station around. Please fuel my car. And then you will have a way to fuel it and will continue the journey. 
It is not by anybody's strength. It's by the grace of God. So we don't sit here to talk to you because we know all. Never. We don't sit here to talk to you because we have learned already. I don't read any book. The only book I read is the word of God. So any sometimes when I'm coming, I don't even know what I'm coming to say. But he will speak to me. He tells me, do this and do it, and I do that. I speak the mind of God and nothing else. And nobody can influence what I want to say because I am not sitting here on my own. I am sitting here because somebody has sent me. Somebody has given me a direction to give. It is not for me. It's for him. And the glory shall be given unto him. Him. If I am not careful and allow men to rule, I become a kind of man. So I always tell him, give me all chances to speak. I don't want to speak my mind. Yes, it's good to get advice. It's good to hear from people. He adds up to it. But the best person I will listen to in my life is God. And when God adds up to the advice I get from people, it becomes on point. Yes, people can advise you. But the best person to speak to is God. And when God speaks and gives you direction, the rest of the advice adds up to it. It becomes more point. It's good to get more points to speak the word of God, to help you, and for me to also help myself. We are all in this together. I'm telling you this. Whatever has happened, whatever is going on, that you have a mind of divorce, a mind to, to leave your marriage. No, you can't do it. Do you know why? Seek the face of God first. He has got a mystery. He has a mystery key to marriage. I don't have the key. No man of God has it. No president has it. The only one that has got the key, his name is Jesus. Run to him and let him help you with the key. If there's anything difficult in your marriage, that something is going on in your marriage you don't understand. If your husband is cheating, if your wife is cheating, if something is going back, it is bringing problems in your home. Please, the key the key owner, his name is Jesus. Run to Jesus first. When you go to Jesus, he has the best solution to the problem. Do you know why? Because he made that institution and every solution to any problem in that institution, he is the perfect person to give it to you. Any other person can give you their mind and God has directed them. So if you go to God first, he can direct you to who to go to. And then when the person speaks to you, no, this one is not from man. It's from God. So listen to me. If you want to divorce, no problem. But before before you go and divorce, go to God first. Seek his face first. Let him speak and direct you. And when God speaks to you, listen to it. Because he's speaking for your good.